we're back out on the bass buggy. And today we're talking about why you're having such a hard time getting those bass in the boat. It's not what you think it is. Stick around. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing, and today we're talking about why some anglers have such a difficult time, after hooking into a bass, getting it into the boat. A lot of anglers just don't have many opportunities to get out on the water, and when you finally do, you're spending all day locating bass and trying to find that bait that they will strike. And when you finally find that magical combination and you get them to strike, only to have them come off before you get them into the boat. It's like getting punched in the gut. You hook into a nice fish and it's pulling drag, and you're fighting it for several minutes, only for that bait to come popping out of the water, screaming right at you, and for that fish to go swimming in the other direction. You're not getting that one back. That fish is done for the day. And you almost wish you'd never hooked into it in the first place. It is one of the most demoralizing feelings an angler can feel. Now, a quick search across the internet will tell you, well, you just need sharper hooks. Your hooks aren't sharp enough. They're not the good hooks. They're bending out too easily. That's why you're missing fish. I'm about to blow two big holes into that theory. First and foremost, why is it only my treble hooks? Why doesn't my swim jig need to have the hooks changed on it? Why doesn't my football head jig need to have the hooks changed in it? I'm having the same problems with those. Why doesn't changing the hooks work with them? Well, we all know the reason for that. You can't change the hooks on a spinner bait or a chatter bait or a jig. What you buy is what you get. And more importantly, here's the second hole in that theory. This is an Ozark Trails lipless crankbait. This is a Cotton Cordell Super Spot. This is a Strike King Red Eye Shad. And this is a Sixth Sense Quake 70. Now, those baits run in price from $2 to nine dollars. What do they have in common? They all have the original hooks from when I purchased them. That's right, the Ozark Trails, the Cotton Cordell, all have the original hooks. And I catch fish with them. I don't have any problem bringing fish into the boat, especially on that Cotton Cordell. That bait is so chewed up from all the fish that I've caught with it, and it still has the original hooks. Why? because sharper hooks are not really going to help you with a better hookup rate. Now, higher brand hooks such as Gamakatsu's or Hayabusa's or even Berkeley Fusion, these expensive hooks are undoubtedly going to be higher quality. They're going to be stiffer. They're going to be sharper. But the question remains, is that going to help your hookup ratio? And the answer is probably not. Now, why is that? Well, it boils down to two main things and that is your gear and your timing. Both of those can be easily fixed with a little bit of effort. You don't have to have a bunch of money to do it. So let's take a look. Now, first and foremost, we're gonna talk about your timing. And yes, while this goes hand in hand with the gear just a little bit, we're going to examine this first. A lot of anglers are setting the hook way too early. And as a result, that fish doesn't have the bait in its mouth quite far enough yet and when you're setting that hook you're setting it incorrectly you're either not putting enough force on it or you're swinging the rod in the wrong direction so that hook is never set properly in the fish's mouth to begin with so as you're dragging it along even if you have double or triple treble hooks on your bait you're only ever getting the point of one hook in the fish's mouth and if that fish jumps comes out of the water and flips or causes you to have slack in your line one way or the other or that fish gets leverage on that bait somehow a myriad of things that can happen after you hook into that fish well that fish is coming off and you've lost that one however with a little bit of patience and some experience into understanding how hook sets should be done you're going to lose far fewer fish it takes a little bit of practice and it takes a lot of patience, but it can be done. And the best part about it is it doesn't cost you anything but time. And who doesn't want to be on the water more often anyway? So that's a bonus. Now that brings us to our second thing, which is the gear that we're using and how we have it rigged up. 
Now in the bass angling world, there's a huge debate raging over what type of line to throw. Do you want to go braid? Do you want to go braid with a fluorocarbon leader? Do you want to go straight fluorocarbon? Well, all of those have both their pros and their cons. For myself, it depends on what type of fishing I'm doing. And why does it matter? Because that definitely affects your hookup ratio. Now, first of all, we're going to talk about times that I use braid to a fluorocarbon leader. And that is in this instance. This is my flipping stick. It is a 7'3 Shimano rod. I've got a Abu Garcia Revo S on here. It has got a 7.3 to 1 gear ratio. I want that little higher gear ratio for flipping. I want just a little bit higher gear ratio with this. So that way if that fish runs at me, when it hits it, I can take up that slack and set the hook. And that's what is important. You have got to get that fish's head turned and coming to you. Otherwise, they'll have a tendency to bury themselves in slop or whatever covers around. And once they do that, well, your job just got 10 times harder. And since I'm using a heavy power rod with a fast action tip, that means I'm not going to get a whole lot of parabolic bent. However, even five years ago when guys were using 10 foot long broomsticks to do their pitching, rods and reels have come a long way since then. They've gotten a lot more dialed in and we can actually scale down that size. Now what does that do? Well, it gives us a lot more accuracy in our casting and it's also ease of handling. When I'm setting the hook on this, I'm not playing around. When I see that line move, or I feel that heavy weight resistance on the other side of it after I flip it or pitch it in there, I reel down and I set the hook. And as I was once told by an old pro angler, don't set the hook like your wrists are broken, don't play around, set the hook like you mean it. And again, the reason why we're doing that is because it is very important to get that fish's head turned. That solid, stout hook set will increase hookup ratio. Now the second part of that equation, obviously, is the patience to know when to set the hook. I see the line moving, I'm going to make sure that that bass has that bait in its mouth, whether I'm throwing a jig or whether I'm throwing a punching rig or whatever. I need to know that that bass has swallowed or inhaled that bait to the point where if I snatch it really good and hard, I'm not going to just jerk that bait free. So it boils down to two things, making sure that that fish has that bait. You want to make sure that you see that line moving, you reel down and you set the hook. You don't want to instantly, as soon as you see it, try to jerk on it because chances are, A, you're not going to get the leverage you need to set that hook and B, the fish doesn't have it good enough to begin with and you just wasted your time and that fish is gone for the day. Now, as you can see, I've got this spooled with 50 pound braid, but I also have a 25 pound floral leader on this. Now, why am I using a leader on this? Because it helps my hookup rate. Braid has no stretch to it. It has no give to it at all. And because I'm using a fast action tip, I'm not going to get a whole lot of parabolic bend out of this thing. So I want that fish to inhale it just a little bit more before I set that hook. That gets that hook a little bit farther down and it allows me to get a better hook set and turn that fish's head toward me. Sometimes I will even go with a monofilament leader and that will give me even more stretch. Although in those instances, instead of using a 15 to 18 foot leader, I only use 10 to 12 feet because otherwise you're getting into too much stretch, I feel, because then the hook sets start to feel a little bit gummy and gooey and I don't feel like I'm getting the same amount of leverage on the fish and I have a harder time dragging it out of the slop. Now this rod is my other flipping stick. This is a loose and it's got 7.5 to 1 gear ratio, again on a Shimano 7.3, heavy power, fast action tip. But this, I've got rigged with 25 pound fluoro. It's got a little bit of stretch to it, so I don't need to add any type of leader. I can let that fish inhale that bait a little bit more, and I'll get that little bit of stretch, get that bait down a little bit further in that fish's mouth before I set the hook. And that is key. You've got to have the right timing. You cannot set that hook too early and you really don't want to set that hook too late because one of two things will happen if you wait too long. That fish will get it down in its gullet and you'll gut hook that fish and kill it, which nobody wants, or the fish will just say, nah, I don't want it and spit it out, in which case you're hook setting nothing. So you have to get that timing right. It's something that comes with experience. You see the line on your bait moving or you feel that resistance, that should be plenty of time if you reel down and set your hook. 
But again, don't just instantly jerk it. You won't get any leverage and the fish won't have the bait good. And that takes us to my cranking setup. This is my cranking setup. This is an Abu Garcia Max Pro. Uh, as you can see, I've got a generic no-name crankbait on it. And again, those are stock hooks. I don't have any problem with the hookup. This is my do-it-all seven-foot medium-heavy rod. Everybody's do-it-all rod. These things do a little bit of everything. I like to use them for my cranking setups. And this has 12-pound floral on it. It's lighter than what a lot of guys are using, but I like the extra casting distance and I feel like I'm not getting that much of a trade-off as far as losing fish for being broken off. I don't get that. I'm, I, I'm, I'm rarely broken off, so I feel like I'm good enough with that. When I'm cranking this bait and I feel that distinctive tug of a fish striking the other end. Now, if you've been doing this long enough, you can tell the difference between grass and a fish. Because with grass, you go to pull, it doesn't pull back, it just feels kind of sloppy. And it feels kind of like your bait gets a little bit heavier. But with a fish, even a little one, it pulls back. Again, sweep that hook and set it like you mean it. Don't jerk it, sweep your body with it, sweep it from your hands, get that hook set in that fish's mouth. Doing so will allow you to fight that fish all the way back to the boat and land it. If all you are doing is quick little jerks, chances are you're not setting that hook as good. You want to be able to make sure that you've got that hook set. So you sweep that rod. Nice sweeping actions. You don't necessarily have to set it with the same amount of force you do when you're Texas rigging or jigging, but you still want to make sure that you put enough oomph into it that you have got that bait firmly stuck in that fish's mouth that no amount of shaking or no amount of swimming is going to tear it free that fish is coming to the boat and lastly we have my finesse setup this is my spinning rod it has a 30 size reel on it 300 size or whatever it varies from brand to brand and you can see i've got one of my homemade stick baits stuck to it with a 3 16 ounce bullet weight now this i have spooled up with 10 pound braid and on these i put either a monofilament leader or a fluorocarbon leader this is a medium power rod and it's got more of a parabolic bend to it this has more give to it when i'm setting that hook and that is fine because i feel like i'm getting more bite more friction and with that lighter setup you need that extra bite to drive that hook home this is the same idea as my flipping stick. When I have that bait out there and I see it start to drift off and I know that the fish has it, I reel down and I set that hook. And I'm not playing around. I don't act like I have broken wrists. I set that hook with some force because I have to get that fish's head turned. So whether I'm using my flipping stick or my finesse setup, you've got to drive that hook home and you have to do it with some force. So, and that will help you get those fish to the boat or to the bank or wherever it is that you're fishing. So there you have it. The two main keys when it comes to bringing fish to the boat are making sure we have proper hook sets, being patient enough to let that fish have the bait all the way, and hook setting it the correct way with enough power and oomph to making sure we're driving that bait home. And the second thing is our gear making sure our equipment is rigged properly to do the job. You don't have a small hammer to drive a big nail. We well, have to make sure you've got the right line and the right setup on your gear to help you get that fish in the boat. Now, each angler is different, and you might find that subtle tweaks here and subtle tweaks there will improve your hookup ratio. But with these tweaks and these tips, I guarantee if you are losing fish, doing these few things will greatly increase the number of fish you land and greatly decrease the number of fish that are getting off. And again, these are so simple to do and they don't cost you anything. So try them out. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.